How you doing? Welcome to this podcast. Uh, this series will be talking about drug calculations. I'm Felix Marquez. Mike Kisla. And today, once again, it, we'll be talking uh, about drug calculations. I'll be showing you uh, my formula, the FSF, Felix's Simple Formula. And Mike? I'm going to teach you one formula, the master formula. It speaks for itself. All right. And you are a master if you're the only one doing this. So, yes. Okay. Absolutely. But we're going to get into it. So, so quick things, Mike, that we need to know. First of all, there's three types of uh, measurements. Yeah. Right? Um, and, and, and for those of you that are all bunged up about math because you haven't touched math in a long time, remember, we're not going to ask you in any of these drug calculations to do any math that's more complicated than what you did in fourth grade. So, yes, you have to reinvite your brain into maybe some basic uh, things that we have to have moving forward. Um, Subtraction, adding, division, the, multiplication. Uh, multiplication. How to deal much. with a how to deal with a fraction? You know, that, Once that, in a while. that sort of thing. So the three household, there's three household. Uh, I'm sorry, there's three measuring uh, types of measurements out there. We have household, which is your standard household things. You know, we refer to household measurements as you know teaspoons, tablespoons, mm -hmm. uh, gallons, pints, quarts, stuff like that. Then we get into the apothecary, which we get into grains and stuff like that. That's really old school. Very old school. Yeah. Uh, then Romeo we have the and metric. Juliet, mortar and pestle made right. those. Right. The main two that we probably see the most is uh, the metric system, which everybody's familiar with, with uh, milligrams, micrograms and stuff like that. I, uh, I love when we say everybody's. In 1979, we big push, right? Metric. We're going metric. We spent about three days on it, and all Americans went, that's hard. Yeah. And we gave up on it, right? But remember, math and science, it's never not been metric. So you're coming into an industry that's always been in this. So it's a matter of familiarizing yourself. Absolutely. So why we need to be familiar with metrics, because that's what we do as a profession. Uh, in our profession, that's what we use. But we also need to be familiar with household because that's what the layperson uses. So if I tell, example is, um, hey, Mike, your child is sick. Give them, you know, five mLs of Tylenol. What? What the hell is five mLs? But if I said give a teaspoon. Give a teaspoon, suddenly uh, mom and the housewife knows what you're talking about. And very often those equivalencies are not going to be on your labels. It's our job to bridge that gap Correct. as the medical professional, not for them to learn ours. And we have to be able to speak all the languages so we can translate among so them. So we can communicate, right? Because sure. communication is the success of all relationships. Would you agree? I would. I tend and to most agree. people who divorced, the problem was lack of? Money. Um, it was money. Communication. <laughs> all right. So let's get started. So let's start with some um, simple stuff, Mike, uh, as far as um, how to convert uh, grams to milligrams to micrograms, right? So I have a simple way of showing, if you don't mind me. I'm going to acquiesce to his simple system on this side. So we'll <laughs> look at that. Huh? Holy cow, we got the same Felix thing, right? and Mike are on the same page associated so far, with math. Good. It doesn't happen much, but yeah. enjoy it. But me and Mike are, uh, are, are artists, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use this board uh, since we both are artists we are we maybe absolutely. abstract artists but an artist is an artist would you agree yeah. so we call this the top of the stair so the top of the stair we're going to go ahead and start with grams why mike i don't want to go any higher than that because then we get to kilos then we mix this up and we're talking we get these this is mixed up. You take the when you say kilos in this industry, they take you to a certain neighborhood. Yeah, and you're likely to kilo your patient, so yeah. don't do that. So we don't want to get into the probably the highest uh, in pre-hospital, uh, the highest weight of medicine. And let me talk about that real quick. When we say weight of medicine, we're talking grams, milligrams, micrograms. So when we refer to weight of medication, that's what we're referencing. So the highest weight we're probably going to deal with in pre-hospital is grams. If I take one step down, it'll be milligrams. If I take another step down, that's going to be micrograms. So which way am I moving? I am moving towards the right. And you'll see why in a minute. But every time I take a step down, I am moving this decimal, which I'm going to show you in a minute where that decimal is. We're going to move it. Every time we move a step to the right, we're moving that decimal three times to the right. Okay? If I take another step down, guess what I'm going to do? Move that decimal three more times to the Right. And feel free, if you're in a test, draw this out. Help yourself, right? Bring in that scratch paper. Allow yourself to visualize it to help yourself make these conversions. Absolutely. So, uh, if you look at grams, I'm at the highest level, right? The highest mm -hmm. step. So, that's a higher weight, a, a larger 
uh, mm -hmm. weight of medicine, as I go down, I become much smaller. So grams will be bigger than Roughly milligrams. 1,000 times smaller per step. Absolutely. Then micrograms even smaller. So let's put this into an equation, Mike. Why don't mm -hmm. you go ahead and draw an equation, Mike? Let's do one milligram or one gram. How would you right. take one gram and convert it to so micrograms? If, so if I have one gram, I know that that fits all the way up here on the top of my step. If I'm going to go down the steps and I'm going to go down one step, I now know that one is a whole number, so my decimal point goes there, and I'm going to add my three zeros to the right for having gone down the stairs. And now I know I have 1,000 milligrams. Now if I have to make that conversion once again, very quite simply, just change the milligrams, take it off, add three zeros, and which case you in fact have one million micrograms. And why? Because Mike moved two steps on the scale, so that's six times he moved the decimal. So Mike, let me add on that real quick. So Mike said the decimal was here, then add three zeros. That's great. What I like to say for less confusion is move the decimal three times. Yeah. Why? Because if this was 0 0.1, I can't add three zeros. Right. Move but I moved the decimal, decimal three, three times. Absolutely. So you can see it's actually, if there was 0 0.0.1 grams, I moved it three times, now I have 100 milligrams. And one thing non-negotiable, Felix and I are on the same pages as well as our industry. Absolutely. If in fact something starts with a decimal zero and you do five. not have a zero here, it is wrong. Because that right there, if I write 0.3 as an order, that dot cannot be the difference between my patient getting 0.3 or 10 times as much and 3 and perhaps overdosing. So if the zero is not there, I'll assume that's a pen stop rather than Correct. something you intended as a decimal point. Absolutely. Not negotiable. Absolutely not negotiable. Always put the zero if it's not a whole number in front of it because that dot could be mistaken for either being there, which is we wanted to, or mm -hmm. mistaken that it's not there and it should be there. But if you put a zero in front of the number, there's no mistake, right, Mike? Right. It just points it out that this was not an inadvertent dot but, but an intended decimal. And, and you can't have any variables when it comes to math or medication administration. Correct is correct, and everything else is potentially lethal, so it just has to be right. So, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Now, let's move on to um, another thing that's important you need to know. I, I agree. Uh, you might agree, Mike. Uh, kilos and weight. Kilos and weight, right? Um, let me just erase this board right here. So, Mike, unfortunately, in medicine, we don't use pounds. Not typically. We use kilos. But it's, yeah. don't, if some people say, wow, that sucks. It's worse. There's some countries that use stones. Yeah, so, 20 stones. And yeah, yeah. I, I think that's horrible if you say, hey, honey, how many stones you weigh? But I assure you, if you look at the entirety of the planet, the U.S. using pounds is considered antiquated, old school, and really inefficient, whereas the metric system is highly efficient, and that's why science and math has always used it. Hey, does any uh, certain amount of stones equals a boulder or a mountain? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I think it's per square acre, how many <laughs> oxen you can use, or <laughs> that's a big, some equivalency. Uh, that's a big spouse. <laughs> all right, so, Mike, I, I, we all know that, that uh, one pound equals two point two kilograms. kilograms right right i know once they throw that decimal is no longer a whole number now oh, it's you had a decimal crazy. people get a little sweaty in the forehead get a little anxious right. so I'll, i'm here to tell you that if you're off by a pound or two on your patient for instance if you're guessing weight it's not that crucial with the medication we give in the emergency setting that we utilize it if it was that serious guess what every stretcher will have uh in the country you'll have a scale how many people have a scale on their stretcher? Not too many. In the hospital setting, for you nursing students, certainly, that's something where we can actually weigh our patient particularly, and a lot of beds do have that capability. But remember, uh, pre-hospital setting, you have to use those carnival skills, right? And if you have to develop that, start now. Get good at a patient that can't answer the question how much they weigh, because you know they're going to answer in pounds because they're Americans, in which case, Get good at looking at somebody, guessing their weight, then ask them, right? And, and Mike, you brought up a, 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 a very important uh, point is in hospitals they use, it's very important. And let me tell you why the scale is probably on the bed so, more, so much more important than us mm -hmm. in pre-hospital. In pre-hospital, we give in meds. So if you're off by a pound or two, it's not that serious. But in a hospital, we 
use a scale, not so much to see how much we put on, but how much we gave the patient and how much they took off. So example, right. if I gave my patient two liters of saline. Right, we want to make sure they're diuresing correctly, make sure correct. those inputs I'm and outputs. I'm getting that two liters Really, it's, back. The, it's, the, it's the best correlation between I and O to a lot of times is getting those daily weights. Right, very good. So um, back to uh, how to convert. So I have a simple way, Mike might have another, I'm not certain, mm -hmm. um, but I like to uh, go in pound, uh, when I use pounds, mm -hmm. go up in 11s, right? So uh, we'll start with um so uh 11 pounds mm -hmm. right so if i go up again in 11 the next number will be 22 right mm -hmm. then 33 uh 44 you guys see where we're getting at what's at the 44 55 and you're gonna find 66. that 66 there's a skill set he's utilizing here called ratio and proportion if you can have a brain that can think in ratio and proportion it really just kind of excels you in your ability to kind of work with numbers 88 99 and i'm gonna stop at 110 and remember, I'm going to just put this right here. This is pounds, right? Pounds. So if we're going up in 11s in pounds, well, then in kilos, we go up in fives. So this would be five. What's the next? 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Now, 35, while this is going to be rough rule and it's 40, absolutely going to help you out in the back of the ambulance 45, on the spot, remember. 50. When it's a test and it says, how many pounds is this? Remember, we're, we are expecting an accurate answer, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So who weighs under 110 pounds? What particular patient is under 110 pounds? Typically, typically pediatric patients. Pediatric. So there's a pediatrics. Is it safe to say that the adults are twice the size of Pete's? Uh, in Lake County, they're 19 times uh, the peds. So, so, yeah. so I'm going to stay with the doubles to keep it safe. <laughs> I don't live in Lake County. Uh, by the way, that was Mike Islop with that comment. If you need his address, I could give it to you. Just email me. Just just better food. Lake so County. we go with the adult patients. So if we say they're double the size, it's double the pounds. Right. So now we twenty go up in 22s, right? Yeah. So yeah. now we have 132, right? Mm -hmm. What's the next one? 154. Mike. It's hard for me to count the 22s. And you're probably saying, man, that guy's pretty good. Let me show you how I figure this out. I give a one. That's an odd number. What's the next odd number? Got to be seven. What's the next even number? Got to be six. All right, cool. Next, what's the next odd number? Got to be nine. What's the next even number? Got to be eight. Boom, there we go. We just went up in 20s. Yeah, nice and easy, right? So, and, that, and that gives you your 60, 70, 80, and 90 kilos. Uh, just a nice rest rule. Remember, there's going to be a couple that your, your, your veteran paramedics out there are going to tell you, hey, double it, minus 10%. There's lots of rough rule, quick drugs. Why? Because in the emergency setting, we're all about identifying the drug that's needed and getting it on board fairly quickly. Um, more accuracy allows more time. More time, right. basically, it's because you have more time to give. So, Mike, if I have a, a female patient that says to me, hey, um, how much you weigh? I ask her. She says, I weigh... 170 pounds not today today you weigh 176 <laughs> inner voice right inner, inner voice. voice right very good unless she says i weigh 180 pounds and you say well today you look 176. and remember based on his scenario being a female patient just add 10 percent in your in your head just know that that that's a rough <laughs> rule that tends to be accurate unfortunately so that's that's just a quick way to uh figure out your kilos uh so you go up in peds once again if you go up in, in pounds and 11s 11 22 33s then you go up in five in kilos and remember um when it comes down to that test be prepared for us to give you a rough rule on give us we're going to tell you how many kilos and tell us how many pounds this is and vice versa you're going to have to be able to do these co correlations and conversions um use a calculator you don't use a calculator use your own method come up with the right answer that, that's really the key mike i got a question for you apothecary why in the world would i need to know apothecary because if you were going to tour the smithsonian institute uh, where they have relics and stuff, you might have to know where we came from to know where we're going, right? So um, it really comes down to a question. Um, one 250th of a grain. I'd like to think these physicians trained this way have long since been retired and maybe even gone by the wayside. So Mike, do However, we have a medication? Do we carry a medication that comes like that? We, we don't, but remember, um, if you're given an order like um, give 0.4 We have to know the equivalency. So, right? so, so, Mike, then we do got a medication, right? Is it nitro like that? It is, in fact. So, okay. nitroglycerin. So, nitro comes 
one one fiftieth of a grain. So you say, so this is a good way to really confuse your QA people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but nitro comes one one fiftieth of a grain. So if you document, I gave this patient one one fiftieth of a grain of nitroglycerin. You're actually a hundred percent correct. So this is with a this is a pocket carry system. Be so, prepared to have a meeting as to why yeah. you did that. However, so I'm going to give you the explanation behind it, so you don't get yourself into too trouble. Well, I definitely don't go into QA saying, "Well, Felix told me." All right, um, the one represents the whole. So first, we got to know what's a whole grain. A whole grain is 60 milligrams. I thought that was bread. I'm not really sure. Yeah. So the easy way, you know, I remember 60 milligrams, Mike. I think of a whole clock. Right. It ends in 60 seconds, right? Or 60 minutes, right? So 60 milligrams is one grain. That equals one grain. So I want to know one fiftieth of a grain. What would, how many milligrams would that be? So I take the 150 and math, Mike, what does this mean? Divide by. Divide. So yeah. divide it. So I'm old school. This is what I have to do. So what I'm doing is 60. Oh, sorry. What I'm doing is 150, 150 divided go. into the whole. What's the whole number? 60. 60. How many times does 150 go to 60? It doesn't. So I can add a des to add a zero, I gotta add a decimal. Does 150 go into 600? It does, in fact. Right about four times. Four times, huh? What would that be? Hmm. 600 times, six, oh, uh, sorry, six times, right? Which gives me 600, right? Four mm -hmm. times would give me six times, right, 600. Sure. Uh, 0. 0.4 times 150 is 600. And let's give Felix extra credit for actually putting a zero in before the decimal point, huh? Come on, there you go. All right, so. And that's gonna be our 0. 0.4 milligrams. So one one fifty of a grain is the same as 0. 0.4 milligrams. Mm -hmm. See? So you can actually confuse the QA if you wanted to by writing one one fifty of grain or what everybody's commonly knows as point. This may milligrams. be the reasoning they went to EPCRs so that when you drop down menu as to what you're thinking, you'll find grains just not there. So one one fifty of a grain equals zero point four milligrams. So we just found two ways to write it. We can write it that way. We can write it this way, or we can convert that to. Micrograms. So, 0 0.4 milligrams. I think, I think what he's saying is it's time to break out the stairs. The stairs, yes. <laughs> Let's put the stairs, right? So, we got grams, Mike. What's next? Milligrams, then, and now our micrograms. So, I got to move that decimal how many times? One, two, One, three. two, three. And now, when we see where that decimal point's already there, we're moving that decimal three points. We're only adding two zeros, but we've kept our rule. We moved the decimal three places, in which case, now we have 400 micrograms, and that's going to be accurate. So, Mike, now we have a third way to write nitro administration, mm -hmm. right? So, we can write any one of these down. Now, for nursing students, thing. actually, um, depending on where and when your doctor was trained and in what century, whether it was in black and white, um, technicolor, Chalk, chalkboard. or digital, um, depending, they, they, all these orders written the different ways have to be interpreted correctly and administered properly. Understand there's more, more than one way to skin a cat. But what, at the end of the day, your patient has to get the right amount of medication. Very good. So that's why we need to know a pocket carry because of that. Now, there's another ratios we got to know. Ratios are important. Why? We do carry a drug that splits ratios, right? Such as epinephrine, right? We have Absolutely. epinephrine that comes two ways. We have a 1 to 1,000. And when he says 1 to 1,000, we're talking about a concentration. How much in how much? Right. And then we have a 1 to 10,000. 10,000. So what does that truly mean? That means, well, where are we at? What's, once again, what did I say before? What's the top of the stairs, Mike? That's your grams. Grams. So what this really means is I have 1 gram in a 1,000 mLs. What does this mean, Mike? I got about 1 gram in 10,000 mLs or 10 in liters. 10,000 mLs. So what we want to do is we're asking how many milligrams is that? So I got to convert this, mm -hmm. right? Because it's in grams. So I want to know how many milligrams. So you I got to go down go one step. Down the steps one. So it will be 1,000 milligrams in 1,000 mLs. Which sounds like our favorite concentration ratio. Nice one to one. So how many, however many zeros I have in the bottom, we get rid of the top. So what we have is a one for one. So what it is, is actually one milligram per every one ml. Mm -hmm. 
That's what a one to 10,000 means. It's a one for one. So whatever your weight of your medication is, it's the exact same volume of fluid. Now, don't get confused when he says weight. That just means the amount of physical solid, solid drug within a substance. We're not bringing out some scales, right? Correct. Correct. So if I ask you, Mike, I need you to draw up 0.3 milligrams of epinephrine of 1 to 1 to 1,000. How many mLs would you draw up? Well, if I have 1 milligram and I want 0.3, then I know it has to be less than one milligram because it's 0.3 milligrams so i'm going to go 0.3 mils it's going to be the same number so always come back to your source or your concentration and figure out exactly uh so numbers have to be identical yeah. if you want 0.3 milligrams then draw 0.3 mls if i want 0.4 milligrams draw 0.4 mls if it's a one-to-one -one concentration or one to one thousand now let's talk about the one to ten let me erase that let's talk about the one to ten the 1 to 10 means just that, 1, th one gram and 10,000 ml. So I want to know again, how many milligrams that? Convert that gram into 1,000 milligrams in 10,000 mLs. How many zeros do I have in the bottom that I have on the top? 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. I ran zero. So I can't see an up. inequity here, right? 1 milligram is now in 10 milliliters. Very good. Or a tenth of milliliter per cc. So what we have here is one milligram in 10 mLs. For the lay people, that's that gold box, 10 cc is one yes. milligram in there. Sure. So that's where ratios are important to identify. Now, another one, percentage. Oh, do people hate the percentage? But I am going to simplify it for you to make it real easy. But if I say we have 1%, why we need to know percent? Because we do have medication that comes in percentage, such as lidocaine. You can have a 1% solution of lidocaine. You can have a 2% solution of lidocaine. So you need to know percentage. Because if I have a bottle of medicine, thank God I'm an artist, and it says 1%, and in that 1%, I have 50 mLs. Well, how many total milligrams are in there? You probably say, I have no freaking idea, Felix. Well, watch. I'm going to break it down, and you're going to understand. So 1%. What it means is, once again, what's the max amount of we're going to have is grams. So that means that one is one gram. Mike, what's the maximum percentage you can really get? 100%. 100%. That's so that's thing. on 100 mLs. So 1% means one gram in 100 mLs. What does 2% mean? Two grams in 100 mLs. But I want to know how many milligrams are in this bottle. So you have to, again, go back to your stairs, do that conversion. So we have 1,000 milligrams in 100 mLs. And you know we hate when we carry a bunch of zeros. So let's cross out. Two, one, one. Two zeros. So, Mike, how many times does one go into 10? Just about 10 times. So we use the one, we use this. So we have 10 milligrams, milligrams per, per ml. Per, per cc or per ml. That's Don't get confused. Milliliters and cc's, same, same thing. thing. Right? right? There is equivalent. Mike is just dating how long he's yeah. been doing this. When you hear somebody <laughs> say cc's, they've probably been doing this for a pretty long time. So I'm going to stick to ml's because I'm pretty new at this. All right. So he has his 10 uh, milligrams per ml. That's what 1% means. So if I did the 2%, let's do that. 2,000 milligrams in... Again, 100 mils. 100 mls, right? What are those zeros? How many times does one go to 20? About 20 times, so 20 milligrams per cc or per milliliter. So, Mike, you guys got that? Now, watch this. Let me simplify, simplify it even easier. Make this real simple. FSF. Let me put that up here. Felix's simple formula. Write that down. All right, here we go. Florida State fans just got a little excited there for a second. Hold, yeah. your, hold, your, hold your water. 1%. Whole number? Whole number. So where's the decimal right here? Right after. All you got to do is one decimal one time out of zero. Mm -hmm. and you're so right. it's 10 milligrams per ml. 2%, right decimal right here, move it over out of zero. Now remember, every single working medic that's been out there treating patients for more than five years, 10 years, 20 years, uh, you got a bunch of different working methodologies that you can come up with math. The big key is, at the end of the day, find a way to make your patient get the right amount at the right time for the right reasons. Here we go. Here goes a point zero point nine percent. Whoa. 
Move that decimal how many oh times? God, a percentage and a decimal in the same number. Yeah. Move the decimal one time. So what is it? Nine, nine milligrams, milligrams per, per ml. 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 Oh, that's it. And in that case, 0.9, that's going to be how much sodium's in there, right? Correct. How much salt's in that actual salt right. water we get. Nine routinely. milligrams for every ml that's in there. Perfect. So that's pretty much the equation of percentages. So if I had a bottle of medication, and it says I had a 2% solution, and it told me I had 10 mLs in there. I already know how many milligrams, because 2% means 20 milligrams per mL. How many mLs I have there? 10. Um, so 10 times 20 is? 200. I have 200 milligrams and 10 mLs. I figured it out by knowing the percentage of the bottle. While we don't have to do that equation routinely, it is in the skill set that you have to and will be tested on. No question. So, now, let's get into what we've been, the main event. The throwdown. The throwdown. <laughs> Master formula. I'm going to use this board. I'm going to call this Felix's board. And we'll use that. That'll be Mike's board. And what we have here, FSF. Right. Simple. Mike. Very subjective. However, I'm just going to write one over here. It's just called the... Again, name speaks for itself. And here's the big key. One master formula. Some people say one is enough. Some people say three is a party. Well, three in some places is a felony. So. All right. So I'm going to start with mine, if you don't mind. Please, please. I have three simple formulas. We always save the best for last. Formula number one. Well, I like to call it formula for an IV drip. All right. Let me just... Sorry, put one here, just put IV in front of this. This is for IV drip. How I know I'm gonna use this formula, how I know I have an IV drip, anytime an order is given to you, that a, me, a certain amount of medication per minute. Mm -hmm. So the doctor says, I need you to give three milligrams per minute. That per minute is telling you this is a drip. Anything more than a minute, it's over time. So an IV drip needs to be per minute, okay? so. IV drip. There's three things you need to know, okay? Is my formula is desired dose times your drip set. What do you mean by drip set? I'm going to talk about it in one second. Great question. Over dose on hand, and we're going to need the weight IV bag, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. So let's talk about desired dose first. Desired dose is doctor's orders. Your order. Yep. Whether it be a protocol, whether it be at the bedside in the ER, whether it be up in ICU, in any environment, it's your order. And the thing you have to always know about your order, don't change and your change order. Right? Word of God, change don't change it, the no. order. Well, Mike, you can. But you can do whatever you want on your last day of work. Last day of work. Last day yeah. of work. Right. Clock out. Yeah, it's done. So Give it, change the order, done. Yeah. All but, right. but concentration we can change because that's just some guy, Frank, out in some warehouse. We don't care about him, right? right. We gotta, we gotta make sure so we're desired home. dose, so I want to drive home that is, it's, it's, your, it's your order. That's what you have to buy by. You cannot change that order. I'm joking about do whatever you want your last day of work, but mm -hmm. that's your order. You cannot change that. If you change that, you are now going against what your medical director allows you to do. You can create an equivalency in your concentrations. Correct. Don't change, change the, the order. order. That is set in stone, right. set in concrete. Now, drip set. Mike, you brought up a good point. You want to talk about drip sets that we utilize? Yeah. Uh, they so, Mike, 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 before you write there, can you write on your board and stay away from mine? just thought I could help him. All right. Um, drip sets basically come in a bunch of different styles, right? Now, obviously, what we have to understand is when we're giving a, a bag of fluid and we're putting a medicine in there, medicine X, right, the unknown medicine, and we want to have as much control on how that medicine gets into the patient as much as possible, that means we're going to have in the pre-hospital setting typically as well as in the ER setting, um, a chamber here with a roller ball. That gives us a little bit of control on how much fluid is going to come down. Now, if we have a small little stem up in here in that drip chamber, kind of like we, a should, needle. we should try to have that about half full to allow visualization, right? Um, and what you're going to find is every 60 drops in this particular set is going to be equal to one milliliter. Mike, let me, let me just highlight this in a different color. Milliliter, not minutes. Not minutes. No, not one, minutes. 60 drops per, per milliliter. milliliter. So when that drops 60 times, that means you've given one milliliter. There are different skill sets. In other words, if I just want to give fluid, 
I don't have any medicine in there. I'm just giving the patient volume. Well, that's a different type of skill, it's a different type of drip set we can use here. It doesn't have that little stem in there. It isn't divided downward. It's a much larger drop. This one is only going to have 10 drops. So it looks something like this. Per milliliter and or the drops are six times bigger, right? So, and these are the two standard utilizes. Is that all there is? No. 15 There's 15 drops. drop sets. Um, this one, you're going to see in a, written in a lot of places, is considered a micro set, i.e. small, where this is a macro, i.e. big drops, right? Bigger drops. You know, Mike, I remember this, you know, micro, small. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember Mac row, a Mac truck. Those are big trucks. They're big, Mac. So you see Mac, big, micro, Mike, little. Psychology comes later. It's, it'll be a therapy session. Um, again, micro, small, obviously macro, big. Um, in which case, we're, the most control we want, if I'm going to put a medicine in that bag, my expectation of you as a practitioner, a nurse, a paramedic, if you're administering medicine, I want as much control as I can, and typically I'm going to always make the selection of a micro is Correct. appropriate. However, keep in mind, when the wrong amount of fluid could hurt your patient, say they're an infant, maybe a micro drip or some kind of Buretrol or another secondary, because we don't want to overload even, because then even the medication if of fluid alone can actually be dangerous, so we might want to use a, a micro. I like micros, gives us more control. Mm -hmm. And the biggest, maybe a few, important for you nursing students out there, um, big equivalency you have to understand. Every once in a while, math doesn't like us, but this is that one instance where it does. So this is going to be denoted for a 60 drop set in drops, per minute. That's how your answer when we do the math is going to come out to be. However, you nurses out there are working in milliliters per hour because you got those fancy pumps, right? And that number inside that little screen there is going to be mils per hour. You have to understand simply because the nature of there being 60 drops in a milliliter and 60 minutes in an hour makes these two numbers equivalent. So if you medics can figure out drops per minute on a 60 drop set, you have figured out the equivalency Correct. for nurses, mils per hour, and vice versa. We're doing the math in different values, but coming up with the same numerical value. And that's really important. So, so when your right, medic brings you in It's the same patient, but different. Yeah, same but different. Different, but, but again, just because there happens to be 60 drops in a, in a mil and there happens to be 60 minutes in an hour, luck behold that, that it works out. So when your paramedic shows up at the ER and I have them on 15 drops per minute of dopamine, um, you know you go to your pump for the nurses and you set it at 15 mils per hour, you are giving an equivalent amount of drug, providing that you've kept the same concentration and kept the same medicines. So to a clarification, so you understand what you're talking about, when a paramedic, we figure out how many drops per minute, right? Mm -hmm. To give us the how many mls we're going to give. Right. You just got to get those mls. Now, figure out how many we're giving an And hour. again, remember, this is only going to be true on a 60 drop set. 60 That's drop not set. true Different on any micro. other, simply based on that ratio. We so just to, just to recap and sum this up, my paramedics, because this podcast is pretty much for the paramedics, is we want to focus on two, two drip sets. We want to focus on the 60 drops per ml and the 10 drops per ml. As Mike said, if you're giving medication, you piggyback in it on medication that this uh, piggyback medication, you want to use a 60 drip set. And the reason why, you have better control. Better control. But if you have to give volume over a period of time, you might want to use the 10 drip set. Or mm -hmm. if we have to sure. give certain medication over a period of time, we can and put that I'm, medication in I'm volume. If I'm putting a couple of five grams of mag over here and I want to give it over 30 minutes, I might use a mag. Bro. Now, Nothing Mike, like you're probably going to kill me when we do this, but piggyback. You know, I've seen a lot of medics, mm -hmm. when we talk about piggyback medication, piggyback medication, I've seen medics actually take off the main line and then put directly the medication line. Mm, not, you know what piggyback means? Good. Let me show you something. Turn around, Mike. I'm going to jump on your back, Mike. You might want to look away at home. Mike, catch me. Don't let me fall, but I'm going to do a piggyback ride. You ready? Here you we catch go. Me? All right. Uh, now, how many feet are touching the ground? Just the two. Just Mike's. Just Mike's feet. So Mike's feet is the actual main line that's in the patient, right. not mine. The piggyback. Mine are attached to Mike. The so don't get rid higher. of Mike. Right. Right. If you get rid of Mike, then I can't piggyback. Does that make sense? All right. Let me go. Does that make sense? Makes sense. All right. So um, two. So if you're doing it opposite, one, you're giving up that control, and two, you're giving up a lot of your safety net. Right. Your piggyback is something you're adding into a main line rather than taking the place of. Okay. So, so now we understand drip sets. Okay. So because I'm dripping medication per minute, 
my default should always be a 60 drop set. Unless your medical director tells you otherwise. Now, if you're taking a qu test question that says, put this and this and give micrograms per kilogram per minute, assume it's a 60 drop set. Why? Because the question didn't tell you to right. use a 10 it doesn't or specify, use a 15. If it doesn't specify, you go to a 60 Always drops. go back to your assumption, which is a 60 drop set. So we talked about desired dose. Mm -hmm. We talked about drip set. Yep. Now we're going to talk about dose on hand. Well, what do you, you have on hand? So dose on hand just equates two simple things. The weight of medicine. What medicine do you have on hand? And what IV bag you're using. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to find a way. Is there another word for dose on hand that we can use? Uh, I don't know. I know you might have one, Mike. It's called concentration. Concentration. How much drug is in one cc? Simple. So concentration, dose on hand. Tomatoes, tomatoes, right? Yeah. But dose on hand is the weight of medicine. So if the doctor says, I want you to put one milligram of epi into a 250 bag ml, then that's what I'm providing. So what's my weight? The one milligram of epi. Sure. What's my IV bag? The 250. Whatever size bag right. you happen to be using. Now, let me talk about bags real quick. Let's talk about all the bags we have. We have a 50 bag MLs. Mm -hmm. We have a 100, 100 bag. Sure. 250? We can have a 250 bag. 500s? 500 bag. All the way up to a liter bag. Up to a liter. Let me talk about that real quick because... For the nurses, don't get confused. You can't go up to a three liter bag for irrigation fluids and things like that. Guys, if you're there. pulling out a 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 ml bags, that's irrigation. Right. That's not IV. If cool. it's your first day at work and they say start IV with this bag, that's a practical joke. Right. Yeah, right? don't do that. Don't do that. If you're so, a fireman, that's good to bring in with you. You can put out a fire with those, but typically not to put in people's vasculature. So these are what we're doing. Typically, with a 50, 100 bag, we use those bags to put medication in to deliver that medication over a period of time. A short duration. Period. Short duration. Five, 10 minutes, likely. Then the 250, the 500 bag is the bag we normally utilize to give medication per minute, mm -hmm. i.e. I drip. IV drip. The thousand bag, normally we utilize to give volume. Volume replacement, typically. I.e., micro drip, give volume. Now keep in mind, that's a guideline, not it's a, a rule. guideline. Because Correct. you can put five grams the of mag in 250 over 30 minutes for your preclinic patient. It's, but a guideline says that's probably 99% accurate. So, so that's formula for me, number one. And that's, the num that's what we use when it comes to. Wait a minute, you mean there's more formulas? Absolutely. It's always better if there's mm. more than one. So number two is what I refer to as IV bolus. If you owe like Mike, you might say IV push, all right, but IV bolus. And the formula is still desired dose, which is your doctor's order, times total volume divided by total weight. What do I mean by total volume? Well, I get the ampule of medicine or the multivalve of medicine. Grab it. Once I have that medicine, I look at it. What's my total amount of fluid in there? That's in mLs. And what's my total amount of weight of medicine? And it's there. So I get my order. I times it by the total amount of fluid divided by the total weight of medication. And that's formula number three. And I'm going to give you examples in a few. I'm just going to go show off my formulas real quick. And I'm going to let Mike do his quick thing so we get back to mine. All right. So last but not least is formula number three. Medication meds over time. So what's the difference between three and one? This is medication within one minute. We'll get to the really important the difference between three this and one. This is medication scene. more than one minute. So what's my formula? IV bag times my drip set divided by time. So what IV bag we're using, so we took the medication, put it in the IV bag, what bag we use, typically I said a 50, 100. Put that there times whatever drip set you use, 60 or 10. And how much time you want to run that over, put it around the effect. Those are my three formulas. So I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to pass the mic. Uh, or better yet, the drop torch. the mic. You Let should drop it, honestly, because um, <laughs> when you get into this much work, right, this much work, um, three formulas. What do people mostly get wrong? Because we said that steps were good for something, and it's called conversions. But anytime you have extra steps in math, that just means extra opportunities to get something wrong. And I don't like extra opportunities. We like to get things correctly. So what if we had a formula that just had one formula, and it does it all? Regardless of what you have to figure out, this takes care of it. And it starts fairly similarly. 
desired dose. And what did we say that that was? Order. That's your order. That right? never changes. And no change on your order. That's word of God. Times kilogram. Now, I think that's self-explanatory, but I'm going to write it in there for you anyway. That's their weight Patience in weight. kilograms. If you put pounds in here, well, you're wrong. Times, now, you're going to see different books. Drip set or solution set. Either way, it means the same thing, and we know our default is going to be that 60, unless you're told otherwise. Over your concentration times time. Now, time always in minutes. Very important distinction. Um, your order, your weight in kilograms, your solution set. 60, unless you're told otherwise. Concentration. What does that actually mean? I think you heard something about it over here. It's hard to make out. I think, it it's, just, I think it's just how much drug is in one cc, right? And much like in all math, you don't want to do apples and oranges, right? You want things to correlate, right? So since we know we can't change the order, we're always going to change our concentration. And there's one truism in most of medicine. As Felix wrote his steps earlier, we're typically supplied in grams if we're delivering in milligrams. We're giving it to it in milligrams when we're supplying it. We're giving it in micrograms. It's supplied one step higher. And that's pretty typical. You can sort of get used to that so relationship. So, Mike, good question right here that you brought that up. So, if my order is in milligrams, but my concentration comes in grams, we do not change the order to grams. These days, you've got to change your grams back to milligrams. Always default what you're supplied to, to your order. Order may not change. Um, in which case, nice and simple. Um, I'd like to go on with a further, more protracted explanation. Let's do it. Like, like Felix did. But here's the thing, I don't have to. That's it. It's simple. Because um, while simple's in here, um, there's a reason it's the master. There's one formula. Um, when you're going to get it wrong because you did great math choosing the wrong formula, I have a solution for you. Just have one formula to choose from. I think you're going to probably pick the right one. That's it. I don't care whether it's an IV push or bolus, or if it's drip over time, or if it's a fluid over a specific amount of time. This formula figures it out for well, you we're each put it to and the every test. time. We're going to put it to the test. So, Mike, you, you'll start. I'll give you, the, I'll give you the mic first. Let me give you a, a, a problem so Absolutely. we can utilize this and see how it works. All sure. right. So, doctor orders you to give... And we always like to write out an order or see it written. Shoot. So, doctor orders you to give uh, three milligrams per minute of epinephrine to a 176-pound patient Epi comes packaged one milligram. And this is how you'll see it written in questions. Your supply, one milligram in? 10 mLs. 10 mLs. And you have an IV bag of 250 mLs of 0.9% normal saline. What chip set do you think we should use? Well, I didn't mention one. In which case, I'm going to go with a micro drip or a 60 drop set. Because if it doesn't say, we know the answer. In which case, I'm going to start out with figuring out what's my order. And that's where we always start out, right? Identify the portions of what you need here. Um, your order is 3 milligrams. I'm going to draw my line, right? Because it's there already. And I typically like starting on the bottom. What's my time here? That's where I start. Mike, let me correct. Uh, my cameraman uh, found an error, and I meant to say three micrograms. micrograms. I, I assume, but math no. is math. No. Um, don't assume that all the orders you're going to be given out there in test correct. land tend to be physiologically appropriate. Math is math. It's never wrong. Um, in which case, we'll make the adjustment just to create some anatomical accuracy. Um, three micrograms per minute of epi, in which case, okay, three mics per minute, in which case my order is there. Now, we're given 176 pounds, and we all know back from way back when, when we talked about we can divide this times 2.2 equals, and we're going to come up with 80 kilograms, but then that second stage of critical thinking has to come in. Where in my order does it say... It's per kilogram or weight-based. It's it? not. So it's a, it's a distractor. It's a red herring. It's thrown in there. Just because you know the weight of your patient doesn't make this medication weight-based. What makes the medication weight-based? When it says three micrograms per kilogram per minute, not just because it's there. So three mics. Now, kilogram, we see it here. If it's not weight-based, just leave it out. So we go directly to our solution set, which is going to be 60. Uh, time in minutes. How many minutes? 
one. And now our concentration, right? Come right here to concentration, and concentration means how much drug is in one cc. Well, if I take this little ampule, my one milligram in 10 cc's, and I put it inside the bag. Now I have one milligram in 250. Now here's some beauty, watch this. It almost works as good as those steps. I make, I have one milligram in how much? 250 cc bag. Now, for folks, you can divide the bottom at the top, works out, gives you your concentration. However, for the advanced thinkers, what do I have to do to make this a liter bag? You multiply it times four, right? Because we know a liter is a thousand cc's. Four times one. So equivalency, I haven't changed the concentration. I just made it four times bigger. So anytime we want to have concentration problems for folks that are going to have problem with the stairs, some folks have balance issues. You don't want to use the stairs. You don't have to. So if I make this a thousand times smaller, thousand divided by a thousand, one cc. Make this a thousand times smaller, just add the c, right? Because we know down those stairs. So now it's four micrograms per cc. So our concentration, four mics. And just do the math. 180 divided by 4, and you end up with? 45. 45. Okay. Nice Let and me, simple. I'm going to use the same problem, and we're going to go to this board. Okay. Um, I'm going to erase all this again. So I'm going to go ahead and write the problem that we, uh, we gave. So we, we ordered, ordered uh, three, three micrograms, micrograms per minute per minute of epinephrine. Of epinephrine. And your supply is going to be one milligram and 10 mils. One milligram, 10 mils. IV bag was? 250 cc's of 0.9 normal C. And we're using a standard. Standard and or macro, right? Drip set, which is? Micro. 60 drop set. All right. So because the order is three mics per minute, we're using formula number one, which is I always recommend write the formula. Desired dose. Wait, how'd you know to use formula number one? Because it's, the order is three mics per minute. Look how easy that was. Welcome to my world. All right. Overdose on hand. Two things I need is weight over IV bag. So this is what I like to do, especially if you're doing math this is the first time and you get used to it. What are the three things we're looking for? Desired dose. What's the next thing we're looking for? Drip set. And dose on hand. So. Let's look back at our pro. What's our desired dose? Pretty simple, right? What's your order? You order three mics per minute. That's my desired dose. What's our drip set? Standard. 60 drops per ml. If you notice, I write everything out. If you write everything out, it makes it easy. Now, all I got to figure is my dose in hand. So back in school, we tell you anything that's in parentheses, you do what first? Work it out. So. Uh, oh, we, yeah, we, so we're looking for our weight on medicine. Remember, what I told you earlier, weight comes in milligrams, micrograms, grams. So what's how epi, how epi comes to supply? One milligram and 10 mLs. But all we care about is the weight. So what's my weight? One milligram. What does this line mean? Divide it. What's my IV bag? 250. So is that the same measurement as this? No. What did we tell you earlier? You can't change your desired dose, but you can change your dose on hand. So I'm going to convert this milligrams into micrograms. So all I'm going to do is move the decimal three times. Gives me 1,000 micrograms into 50. Well, I got a zero I can get rid of. So how many times does 25 go into 100? Four. Did I use the 100? Yes. Did I use the 25? Yes. So what I'm left with? Mics per ml. So do I have the three things I need? Absolutely. So let's make it look like this. What's my desired dose? Right here. Three mics per minute times my drip set, drip set, divided by dose on hand, which was? 
four mics per ml. So whatever's the same on the bottom, we get rid of the top. Real simple. MLs, get rid of it. Mics, get rid of it. Boom. Three times 60 is what? 180. Did we use a 60? Absolutely. Did we use a three? Absolutely. Bring over the divide. What's left? Four. How many times does four go into 180? And if you have to, you could. Don't be ashamed. How many times does four go into 18? Four times, which is 16, leaving two left over. Bring down that zero. Four goes into 20. How many times? Five. All right. Did we use the 180? Absolutely. Did we use the four? Yes. What do we have? 45. Well, what's left for your formula? Drops per minute. 45 drops per minute. And remember, for the nurses out there, if you're Real going to figure this out, simple. remember, 45 mils per hour, you're going to have that same, that same amount of drug being right. offered. That's minutes, by the way. So you can see how easy this was. Real <laughs> simple, basic. Yeah. For some people who are smarter than themselves, this might be a little complicated. But if you're like me, simple-minded, real easy, this works. So When I went to school, as Felix pointed out, back in the black and white days, before there was color, um, we were taught and trained with five formulas. Imagine the day some guy came out with a lab coat, had an MD on the back of his hand, said, you got to memorize these five formulas. And we went, oh my God, really? Five formulas. Uh, it took many, many years to evolve and grow and better ourselves. Some of us came halfway home and ended up with just three formulas. And some really just completed the evolution back to just one so, Mike, let's erase this right here. Let's keep your formula, formula up. Mm -hmm. Now, Mike, it's got a new, another problem. Because his formula, I see your formula works with drip. Fantastic. Absolutely. Doctor orders you to give four milligrams of morphine. I like morphine, Mike. Four milligrams of morphine sulfate. Yep. Morphine comes to, I want you to bolus it, but I have Four to, milligrams. Mike, this is IV push. IV? Yeah, okay. IV push, IV push. Okay. Not IV. Just IV push? IV push, yeah, sure. bolus, right? Mm -hmm. So, and morphine comes 10 milligrams in one ml. How many mls would I have to draw up to give this patient four milligrams? Um, I'm going to go to my desired dose, put four milligrams there. I'm going to put my line. Just move over a little so they can see that. Now, is it weight-based? How do we know? No, because it's not four milligrams per kilogram, so I'm going to leave that out. Is there a drip set here? No. Are we dripping something in? Um, seems like the top of our algorithm is done. So what's on the bottom? Our concentration. 10 milligrams per cc. So as I said earlier, you have 10 milligrams, you have one cc, right? Are we delivering it in milligrams? Yes, there's no conversion to be done. So simply bottom it to the top, which basically one-tenth, right? One-tenth is 0 0.1 cc's, um, in which case uh, 4 milligrams, it's 0 0.1 per cc, um, so your concentration, 0 0.1, and when you divide that out, you'll, you'll, huh? you'll come up to <laughs> 0 0.4 cc's, and if you draw that up, you are now giving um, 4 tenths of your drug and or 4 milligrams. Holy cow, that's crazy, but let me show you mine, let me show you mine. Hold on, let Notice me that mine. mine there was plural. Mine, it's really part mine, of the problem. Mine, 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 <laughs> mine, 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 mine. I sound like Dory. Uh, uh, all right, so here we go. I don't need your marker. I got my own. Okay, so. Do, do you need three markers? So for formula number two, we're going to use formula number two, which is IV bolus or IV drip. I'm sorry, IV bolus, IV push. So it's real simple. It's desired dose times for total me, always volume. always use formula number one. So now Mike's talking about he has one formula, but I'm sure you guys are pretty smart. And you saw how he changed this formula every time. So it was actually multiple formulas. So it was like a chameleon. You know, one formula, but the sky five disguised in one. But I'm black and white. Black, black, white. All right. Anyway, so desired dose times total volume over total weight. So once again, write it out. What are three things we're looking for? Desired dose, total volume total weight. Why I tell you to do that? Because sometimes you're going to have problems. We have a lot of distractors in there to see if we could distract you. So if I look for these simple things, things I could pull all those like distractors. Like telling you the patients in ICU-3 that their favorite color is blue, that they're a Gemini, Correct. or that how much they happen to weigh, but it doesn't change the order. So I'm going to write the same problem there. Doctor ordered four milligrams of morphine, right? 
MSO4, right? That's a way to abbreviate it. And we have 10 milligrams in one ml. Sure. So that 10 milligrams in ml is that bottle of morphine, which inside that bottle we have 10 milligrams in one ml. That's what that means, okay? Mm -hmm. So desired dose is the doctor's order. He ordered four milligrams. Got it. What's my total amount of fluid in here? One ml. What's the total weight of medication? 10 milligrams. I got the three things I need, make it look like that. So my desired dose is four milligrams times total weight, total volume, I apologize, divided by total weight. Once again, what's the same? What's the same? Milligrams. Four times one is four. Did I use the one? Absolutely. Did I use a four? Absolutely. Divided by 10. How many times does 10 go into four? Well, we know 10 don't go into four, so we can add the decimal. So we can put a zero here. How many times does 10 go into 40? Four. Did I use the 10? Yep, did I use the four. What's left? 0.4 mLs. So what you can see is the Boom. exact same amount of math had to take place, except you had to figure out which formula to use first. Simple. Here you're going to do the same amount of math Simple. without having to do an extra step. Simple. And unless you're a CrossFitter, you don't like extra steps, right? It tends to be a problem. Sometimes taking extra steps gets you to the right answer. But it's not really extra steps. It's the same formula, just slightly different. So, Mike, got another problem for you. Let's see if it works on this one. You ready? Mm -hmm. Doctor orders you to give 150 milligrams of amiodarone. Hey. Over 10 minutes. 10 minutes. All right. Over 10 minutes. Seems like a pretty standard order for ACLS. Yeah. Sure. And the doctor wants you to use a 10 drip set per macro. Matter of fact, a macro. Macro. I'm only going to choose a 10 if it tells me the problem. Otherwise, I'm staying with that. 60. You have a 100 bag of normal saline. For well, your visual folks, because I know he likes pictures. I'm going to take that 150, and you're going to notice that that's going to come in a little ampule, right? A 3 mil ampule with 150 milligrams in there. I'm going to take that 3 mils, and I'm going to put it inside my bag. So now I have 150 milligrams in 100 cc's. Do I need to know that? No. And here's how you can't, you can't fail. Start the formula. And I always start by drawing my line. I like filling in the bottom first. Um, if you're an amateur mixologist and bartender at home, you know bottoms up, right? So start with the bottom first. So first thing I'm going to fill in is my time, always. And as soon as I fill in a number here, because here's just another aspect of the beauty of the master formula, one of the two numbers on the bottom has to be 1. So as soon as I fill in a number here in minutes that's 10 or 20 or 30, or if it says over an hour, put 60. As soon as I put a number there that's not 1, I know that is 1. And as soon as I put a 1 here, I know that's my bag. Is that concentration? Where do you get the 1 from? Uh, because for every 1 cc in this bag, it has about 1 cc in it. 1 milliliter is 1 milliliter. So 1 now goes directly here, and now I'm going to put my bag. 100 cc's, how many kilograms? Doesn't happen. Drip set we know is 10. They cancel out. Nice and simple. I'm Easy as can be. All right. Well, I'm going to let you keep using this one because I don't want this marker to confuse me like your formula just did. All right. So I'm going to use the same equation, 150 milligrams amiodarone over 10 minutes using a 10 drip set I have 100 back. So that's formula number three. Why? Because it's more than one minute. If it's more than one minute, we can't use my formula number one, which is medication over time, or IV drip per minute. If it sounds confusing, that's because it is. <laughs> So, what we're going to use is meds, which is short for medication, over time. Why? Because it's over more than one minute. So, what's my formula? IV bag times drip set divided by time. Real Aren't simple. all bags over time? Real simple. So, IV bag, once again, I need my drip set and I need the time. So, if we look at my, the formula. Well, how much time? 10 minutes. That's easy. What's our drip set? 10 drops per minute. That's easy. 
10 drops per amount. What's my IV bag? 100. That's easy. Done. Done. I got the three things I need. I have my IV bag, 100 mLs, times my drip set, divided by time, 10 minutes. All I'm going to say is don't forget to put the 150 milligrams inside the IV bag. Otherwise, because you if just you gave don't, 100 mil bolus and yes, it really didn't help. Correct. So, remember I told you earlier, whatever is the same on the bottom, get rid of the top. MLs cancel each other. So what do I have? 100 drops per minute. If you notice, Mike was quiet on this one because I think he really liked this one. But it's okay, Mike. You don't say nothing, Mike. We're the good. The math We're good. was exactly the same amount of time, except you had to figure out which formula Easy. to use. Piece of cake. Upside is if there's Easy only three, peasy. you can just spin the wheel and just decide. Easy that, peasy on this one. So, so when you said meds over time, didn't you mean meds over a specific amount of time? Absolutely. Because aren't all meds in a bag over time? Well, specific, if you mentioned what I heard, what I said earlier, if it's mm. one per minute, then we use the IV drip. Oh. More than one minute, meds over so time. So, meds over a specific amount of time. In other words, it has an end point versus not. Absolutely. But what medication level, does it have an end point? Two on the bottom has to be one. So, if you fill in any other amount of time, you don't have to do your concentration. The bag is your order. Fill in your drip set, you're done. So, guys. All jokes aside, had a good time here talking about math. Whether you use the master form, which is actually a phenomenal formula, and I'm just busting Mike's chops, excellent formula. If it works for you, use it. I'm if, never going to judge you if you decide to nostalgia and go back into the past. Um, but it really comes down to this one thing that gets you check marks, the right answer, the right amount of drug going to the right patient at the right time. How you skin the cat, we don't care. We don't care. He don't, I don't. You know what we care? Get the, the right answer. Day, we got a skin cat. You got to get the right answer. So whether you use uh, the Felix is simple formula or whether you use the master formula, either formula you use, pick one, use it. What's going to make you really good at math? Whether you use my formula, whether you use uh, Mike's formula, the thing is, you whatever formula you decide to use, stick to it. Then utilize it, master it. How you master a formula? You have to do math every day for 15 to 20 minutes. Absolutely. For six months and you will have it mastered. So, as me and Mike joke, all, we joke about our math all the time, you know, the clash of the titans here, or the clash of the paratitans, uh, when it comes to math, we don't care. We really truly don't no. care. I don't care if you use my formula, I really don't care if you use uh, Mike's formula. I'm not offended if you come into my class that I'm teaching, and this is what you use, and Mike's not offended if you come into his class and you teach You get this. to that mastered expert level at math, and That's you keep it. showing us you keep getting the right answer care about. consistently, then we'll invite you behind the velvet ropes and show you some quicker ways to do math. Absolutely, in, in, in and we will. In certain genres. But we're not going to unlock the keys to not that yet. velvet closet until you show us that you can drive five and nine and right. pass your driving test. Then we can teach you how to throw and, an elbow and, and out the window. We'll, we'll show you that podcast towards the end of your paramedic yeah. program yeah. because we do want your We're going to do a math algorithm to unlock opening it. So right. you have to know. And in other words, what Mike's saying is we're going to teach you how to do math without the math. Right. All right. Um, so, once again, uh, appreciate you. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast of drug calculations. Feel free to visit it anytime. Feel free to drop me an email, fmarquez at allmy.edu, to tell me that you like my formula a lot better than Mike's, and I promise I won't share it. Um, but just, anyway. Just, just one email? Just one yeah. email. This one. Hmm. Um, anyway, enjoy the podcast. Um, I hope you look at it a hundred times if you need to. Um, I expect you guys to be proficient. Uh, so when I speak, uh, me, I'm also speaking with Mike and all my other instructors. We expect you to be proficient when you come to class. So practice your math. Uh, when we come to class, we're doing scenarios. We expect you to figure out the math, do it, do the calculations, and move forward. We don't want to spend the time trying to teach you the formula again. So it's really important that you watch this podcast as many times as you need to to get these formulas down packed. Master right? your craft. Master your craft. Your patients are counting on it. So once again, we're out. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Peace.